Hello, everyone. We're, continu we're continuing our uh, chat series with uh, prior Air Force Band of Flight members. And today we got to treat uh, two currently active duty members. We have both Master Sergeant Doug Cost and Technical Sergeant Jennifer Cost with us. And uh, we're just going to get right into it. So if both of you wouldn't mind uh, telling me a little bit about, about your roots, where, where you grew up, where you went to music school, and what brought you into the Air Force Bands program. I guess we go first. <laughs> um, so I'm originally from just north of the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area, small town, uh, Zillianople, Pennsylvania. Um, I went to my undergraduate degree uh, for music education. I went to Youngstown State University there in Ohio, just over the border, and got the education degree, but always kind of had, I guess, performance in the back of my mind. Um, so when I left there, I actually uh, toured, took a break from school, toured with the Glenn Miller Orchestra for about a year and a half or so. And then from there, I went back to school for my master's degree at the University of North Texas for about a year, uh, which is where I learned about the Air Force bands. I knew the bands, like at Youngstown, I always kind of had the Air Force band for some reason. I really don't <laughs> don't know why, really. Um, it was mostly the DC bands. That's all I knew about, though. Okay. So whenever I was at North Texas, and you know, there's a whole, there's so many people from North Texas right. scattered through all the first bands. Um, when I started to hear about regional bands and there were more options, I was kind of blown away. And I started calling around immediately. And I actually called the band that was, used to be up in Boston and Hanscom. And they had three trombone openings that week. Wow. I called and I thought, well, there's surely I could get one of the three, but I, there's yeah. no way I could get it that week. And so um, kind of let, let that one go by. But then I, I don't know if they told me, I don't remember exactly how I found out about the, the opening at Wright Patterson. Um, but I flew up over that summer and auditioned. It was right around, it might have been on the 4th of July. It was like that weekend. I went over, drove from Pittsburgh, went over there, played uh, the audition and drove back home. And a few days later, I was offered the job. And so wow, great. Back, back down to North Texas to finish up some classes. Um, I actually had to finish, technically finish the degree once I was in the Air Force. Yeah. I had to take some leave, go down, do my recital and everything. But okay. um, yeah, that's how I ended up at Wright Pat. Okay, was that a um, when you're in North Texas? Was that a, a classical or jazz degree, or just a blank classical? Class? Classical. Okay. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's great. And so coming off the road with Glenn Miller and everything, that seems to be another thing I've noticed with uh, prior Force bandsmen is uh, some some folks from from the Glenn Miller Orchestra joining the ranks. <laughs> Yeah, there seems to be a lot. Um, it's yeah. kind of funny, um, especially when now with the, the role as a as the uh, band MTI. A lot of people have come through, and I find out that they were on the road at some point, and we have mutual friends. Um, so they, we know each other from just much different backgrounds. Right. So yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of people from the Miller Orchestra who come our way. Wow, very cool. Okay. Well, how, how about you, <laughs> Jennifer? Oh, so I'm from my hometown is Lafayette, Louisiana. Okay. And I went to LSU for my undergrad music performance on oboe. And then I went out to LA, studied um, at USC for a year, and then finished my master's at the University of Colorado in Boulder. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, then I didn't have a job. <laughs> and there were, <laughs> there were some openings um, in a couple of the bands. And I auditioned one January. And there was a hiring freeze and then um, <laughs> came in about eight, I guess it was about eight months later, uh, they opened uh, hiring back up. So I headed to Wright Pat at that time. Okay, that, that worked out. I'm, I'm from Colorado originally. I did my undergrad oh. at the University of Denver and I, I'm very familiar with the Boulder area. So that's that's pretty sweet. I'm a little jealous you got to study right there in the mountains, <laughs> right in the thick of it. <laughs> that was uh, great. So, how many years have you two been active duty? Uh, it's 
been about 14 and a half. So we're, we're only about a month apart. Wow. Um, okay. So it's funny because like she said she auditioned January and I auditioned in July, but somehow I got in before she did. <laughs> they need um, trombone players. They so, need trombone players more than ever. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, we, cause that, we used to always joke. Um, so when we went through the basic training it was six and a half weeks and so I was in my last week, you know, we were wearing the blues and they're kind of backing off of you a little bit. And um, I remember there being a, a new, like the zero weekers still wearing their civilian clothing. And um, we were all kind of sitting there, you know, hearing everything going on and kind of laughing. Right. Like, oh, <laughs> and there was a good chance that she was probably in that group because <laughs> we didn't know each other yet. So uh, it was just kind of funny to, to think back that, you know, she was probably just starting when I was on my way out. So. Yeah, you've probably seen her get screamed at. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Um, so uh, so then for both of you, your first assignment was at Wright Pat then, right? Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. So how, how long were you there with the Band of Flight? We were there pretty much right at seven years. Okay. Yeah, there's still still some pictures up in the in the hallways of the unit, and I, I could be like, oh wait, yeah, I, I remember him. He was my band MTI. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> playing trombone, but very cool. So, um, what what ensembles did you guys perform in, and what were your favorites? I was the concert band, uh, then jazz band, some brass quintet for me. Um, we had a brass brass ensemble. I used to always like to play in the jazz band. Um, we did a lot, a lot of the Glenn Miller music, uh, which a lot of different bands do. But uh, I guess there, I would say, I, I, well, we had a good quintet too. I guess that last group we had, the quintet was good. Um, we had some fun, on good tours, and okay. it was a good group. Okay. I just did the usual concert band. And <laughs> Yeah, so that when when you were there, it was still like a, a sixty piece unit, right? And then were you there for the? Were you both still there when it downsized to was it forty five, or did you guys disperse at that point? We was yeah, we were there for the for the forty five, okay. and then we, we ended up doing a bop. We put a bop in for Scott, and that's how we ended up there. And so then, how long were you at a uh, Scott Air Force Base with the band of Mid America? about two and a half years okay, okay. and so then it, so uh, i kind of want to go into you know how you you became an mti and you became the band mti uh was so you were at the band of mid-america at the time were you uh applying for that position or looking for extra special duties um well it was basically an, an email an ad came <laughs> out for the job and uh Actually, back at Wright Pat, there was the same thing. There was an opening for it. Um, we might have been senior airmen at the time. Mm -hmm. mm. And I considered it then. And I remember I emailed Mr. Johnson, and he kind of told me what the training was. You know, you have to go through the class, push a flight, and all this stuff. And at the time, I, I kind of thought that was a little bit more than I wanted to do, like pushing a, pushing a flight and all that stuff. I, right. I didn't really want to do all that. And so, but then at, at Scott, um, when the email came out and it happened to be like the very, I think I had that month, I had just sewn on technical sergeant and then like the next week that ad came out and it was for technical sergeant and master sergeant. And for whatever the reason, when that, that time when it came out, it was, it kind of hit me like, I got to do this. Okay. <laughs> at that point I didn't really, I didn't really care about what I was gonna to have to go through training wise. Like you know, I was more willing to do it. And um, it, it was a matter of, I think you were on tour. I think I called her and I was like, so what do you think about possibly moving to San Antonio? <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, I put my name in for that position. And I know that the chief at the time, Chief Goal, he, uh, he approached me after a few weeks and he, had, he said, you know, that if you're not real sure if you want to do this or not, you know, because right now you're still the only name on that list. Like you're the only person who's volunteering for this. And so if you don't want to do it, just let me know and, and we can work around it maybe. And I said, at that point I'd already kind of thought about it so much that I was, I was ready to go. Okay. So as long as, 
long as it works out for her to PCS with me and get into the band of the West, then right. I'm Cool. Was that a was it a fairly smooth process getting the the joint spouse assignment out there? Yeah, it, it yeah, seemed to be. It, I was even in overage at that time. They just welcomed me with oh, open okay. arms. <laughs> and, and since they've changed the Manning document, so there are two slots. I don't feel overage now. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um, so how? I mean, how do you how do you like the the MTI life and then? you know work and then as for you jennifer playing in the band now with without without doug <laughs> i've missed him that's for sure and i'm really glad that he's coming back in 13 days yeah so mm. yeah my time at the end of this month i'll be done so wow uh, um i've enjoyed it it's, it's been a good uh change of pace which is kind of what i was looking for um just to kind of take a break um it's been almost five years now that i've been here in this position so it's it's time to go <laughs> right right i'll be glad to get back to playing um i've been trying to be more consistent with that because that was one hard thing i, I know whenever i first went through the training i probably didn't touch my horn for about nine months oh wow just, because I just didn't have any time um, and then from there it was kind of hit and miss because it was just i wasn't really in the band so right but now that we're getting ready to go back full time yeah it's ramping up it's just kind of an interesting time right now right exactly <laughs> everyone being home so my, the transition will be a little bit strange right exactly <laughs> but i'm looking forward to it though get back into more of what i know uh, right. but i will miss i will miss the the ti position yeah you know as a from a trainee perspective it was it, it was nice as a little bit of a break from from the day-to-day -day everything you know you're still keeping your bearing you're still in, in in boot camp but it's right it's nice at least as a musician to get get to play a little bit and right a little bit of the military side of it from a music standpoint right so <laughs> i remember feeling the same way going through um the funny thing is whenever I went through the training for the VNMTI, so you know, you push flight and uh, they get you to a certain point. And I remember when I first got over to the drum and bugle corps that um, trying to run rehearsals, it was kind of like a weird clashing of worlds because there you are trying to re rehearse a band, work on music, but you're still in this training mode. Right. And so it took a while to kind of settle into how am I going to, how am I going to do this? Like how am I going to act? right uh, some people some people are naturally more of a, they just want to be a trainer and they push hard that way and i kind of fell more into i guess more of the music side right trying to be more encouraging because right. a lot of those people and you, you would know i mean the flight flights you know a lot of those people that didn't play anything or it's or didn't play for a long time right exactly <laughs> so i was more i was trying to maybe encourage them build them up a little bit more and not to always just tear them down so that's why like, that was kind of the approach i took yeah i needed them, i needed them to play <laughs> right <laughs> Get exactly out there and, <laughs> so i didn't want them to be scared i needed them to perform so right i i do remember my my first when the, our first day getting there we got the instruments and everything and then it's like all right here's like 10 minutes of just play on the instrument or whatever just try Try your best to make sounds, everybody. It was, it was right. really chaotic, but <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty nice. Um, so, so kind of two two questions in in one. What are your uh, biggest takeaways for both of you of being Air Force bandsmen, and and what do you think are the most important things that the the bands can offer the the Air Force and communities nationwide? So uh, I think it's really a great job to have where you to wear a uniform and play your instruments. It means so much more to play the instrument when you look at it that way. So right. You are just by looking at you, we are the most trusted organization. And then I get to play a horn. It's just, that's just great. Um, at first, I think when I was at Wright Pad, I was very, um, just wanted to play the horn. But I think, you know, over the years, it didn't take quite 14 years to figure it out. But 
um, it's, it just is more meaningful to play for people um, when you have their force uniform one. And um, especially now, everybody's saying how music is healing people. Even it's more on a global uh, nature. Right. I think it's right. the best thing that we could be doing. And I'm so I'm really glad you guys are doing virtual stuff too. That's that's what we all need. Exactly. Yeah. The same way. <laughs> yeah, I think it's an just an interesting way to connect with people. Um, I never. I'd say I guess I never used to think that way in the earlier years. It takes a while sometimes for that to kind of kick in. Um, I think doing the TI job kind of helped me with that somewhat. Um, I remember having to try to explain to people, um, like the trainees, the guaranteed band people who were going to DC, the, the premier band. So, you know, people get bent out of shape sometimes about how that works. And so, especially if you fight with, you know, someone going to DC or even, even like you, just, a, you know, a guaranteed band person in the flight and right. trying to explain right. to the other ones kind of what you do. And like something you, sometimes you'd see looks or kind of confusion as far as there being bands. And the way I would put it to them was, you know, they're, they go out into small town America and tell the, your, the rest of your stories to those people. Like they're out there telling about what you're gonna do um, through their music and through their performances. So, you know, they're kind of going support for you through their job. And um, I think a lot of them got that. Um, of course, not, not everyone does, but. <laughs> right, yep. But, you know, it's, it's just, Places that we can go to where you can't just drop a plane, like you can't just go and fly some jet into some small town America and land in their main street, you know. So exactly, um, but they don't always get to see people in a uniform, and that's where the bands can go and reach out to the public. Yeah, yeah, we we feel we feel the same way, and it 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 totally changed my perspective when I got in because yeah, it's like I need a job, and I I grew up in Colorado Springs six to the Academy band. And it was great hearing mm. those guys. I was like, Oh, they, they look good. They sound good. I want to be like that. But then once I got into this job, it, it takes a whole nother meaning when I play, especially for a ceremony, it, it really gives another, another purpose to what I do. And it's, right. it's pretty humbling. It's, it's, it's a great experience. So uh, I want to thank you guys so much for, for helping us out with these chats. It, it really means a lot. And I guess now we're all just trying to figure out the technology in these crazy times. <laughs> right. So, so uh, thanks again. And, uh, you know, and congrats on finishing up your time there as an MTI. I hope coming, coming back to the horn and the band is a smooth transition when, when you're able to play with the band. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, eventually. <laughs> Great. I had a chance to play with them this past winter. Uh, some of their Christmas shows that I went and just kind of sat okay. in and played with them. So. That was nice just to get to do something, uh, get to play a little bit. Right. Uh, I can't. I can't imagine like not playing in a section consistently for for that long. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's definitely been interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I, I imagine you'll you'll come right back at it, and it'll be it'll be smooth, and then you two can can be on tour and on the road again together. <laughs> right. <laughs> that would be a good time. So thanks again. Um, yeah, I won't. I won't eat up more of your time, but uh, we we really appreciate it here. The the current members of the band of flight. Sure. Uh, Tell them hi from us. Yes, <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll do. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. Bye. bye. bye.